This show is brought to you by the Email Laundry, making email safe for your customers. Visit www.theemaillaundry.com forward slash tublog for a very special listener offer and to have your MSP's domain filtered by the Email Laundry for free. You're listening to Tub Talk, the podcast for IT business owners with our featured conversation with Richard Tubb and James Kimberley of Kimberley IT. My name's Jeff Nicholson, and this podcast is all about helping you grow your IT business. In this episode, Richard talks with James Kimberley, the founder of Birmingham-based Google business specialist Kimberley IT. A serial entrepreneur, James owns a property company and used to run a web design company. He's also been a consultant for TV program, The Gadget Show. James gave Richard an update on Google Next 17, an annual international event where Google share the latest technology updates with partners and selected delegates. They talked about new Google tools to help small business owners and MSPs. This episode was recorded via a video call between Richard at home in Newcastle upon Tyne, England, and James in Birmingham. And now, without further ado, here's Richard Tubb talking with James. Hi, everyone. Richard Tubb here, and I'm joined today by James Kimberley, an old friend of mine. Uh, James is the founder of Birmingham-based business uh, specialist, Google business specialist, I should say, Kimberley IT. Now, James is a serial entrepreneur. He owns a property company. He used to own a web design agency that worked with the likes of ITV and other big companies. And he's also been a consultant to the television uh, show, The Gadget Show. So lots of reasons uh, that James and I get on. Uh, But the reason for our call today is to talk Google. Now, James, you recently visited uh, Google Cloud Next 17 at the London Excel Center, didn't you? That's correct. So it was was last week Google had their... They have a, an exhibition called Next 17. They had it over in uh, San Francisco the month before, and it came to London last week and down at the Excel Centre. So I went and visited it to see what they had on and what they were showing. Fabulous. So perhaps we can talk a little bit about more what, uh, what you found out from the uh, the Google Cloud Next 17 event. I know Google Cloud Next 17, there's going to be other dates in Tel Aviv, in Amsterdam, Madrid, Milan, and Tokyo. So it's a real worldwide thing. And I think Google are making some of the live streams available to watch online as well, aren't they? Yeah, the, the keynotes are normally recorded and they, they seem to be recording the breakout sessions, but they haven't yet uploaded them onto um, the, the uh, Google Cloud YouTube channel, um, right. which everyone who's interested in Google should subscribe to. Um, yeah. But uh, no, it doesn't. Those, the breakout sessions don't seem to be on there yet, but they're... Um, they're probably the more or less interesting parts, actually. The, <laughs> well, you know, let, let's get let's get your expert insight into some of the developments there um, and what's happening in the Google world as a whole, if we can. Um, the first thing that that sort of struck me was this announcement that Google made about the uh, General Data Protection Regulation D G D P R. Um, every every bit a mouthful as I thought it would be. Um, tell us a little bit more about that. They, Google have said that their plat. Google Cloud Platform is going to be ready by May 2018, I believe. Well, the GDPR uh, is comes into force in May 2018, so they're planning they'll, they'll have it ready before um, May 2018. So they're actually slightly behind um, Amazon and, and Microsoft on that. I think Microsoft's the the most ahead. I think I think there might even be uh, GDPR. GDPR um, ready now. But, it just falls off the tongue, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Google will be will be ready for that, and uh, will meet all the requirements that are, are, are requested in that um, that regulation that's coming into force. Yeah, still, and that's. Sorry to interrupt, Giles. I was going to say that's going to make sure that the, the the Google apps or should I call it Google Suite now? What's the terminology Google use for it? Well, it's actually Google Cloud Platform, and G Suite is an element of Google Cloud pl- Platform. So you've got all the other all the other stuff that Google does on the cloud, but G Suite is one element of the whole Google Cloud Platform package. Yeah, and and there's three three different levels to it now, isn't there? What what I would call so I use Google Apps within my business, um, uh, and I think I probably use Google Apps Basic now. Um, but there's two other versions or three versions in total, isn't there? Well, first off, it's not called Google Apps anymore; it's now G Suite. <laughs> so, there you yes. go. I use G Suite. I don't use Google Apps. <laughs> you're, on, you're on G Suite Basic. They have G Suite Basic, G Suite Business, and G Suite Enterprise. Um, previously, they just had 
the two. So they had well, they, they had an old legacy one which was free, but you, you couldn't get that anymore. Um, they had just G Suite and they had G Suite Unlimited, but they've just renamed it and they've added the enterprise element to it as well now. Um, yeah. Because a lot of the stuff they're working on is to fine tune G Suite so it really works nicely for big enterprises. Um, it's great for small businesses and mid side bus- businesses. Um, but I think they were having issues getting big enterprise businesses to sign up. Clearly, they had a few because they had Virgin Atlantic. I think ITV is one that's, that uses it. And, of course, at Google itself. Um, but it just didn't have all the functionality, especially on the data storage side of Google Drive, that enterprises were after. But now um, it's really enterprise-ready. It, it works really nicely with the changes they've made, to, especially to Google Drive. Um, I've already alluded to the to the work that you do with uh, Google Apps or G Suite. I guess I should call it now. It's not going to work with me. It's going to be Google Apps for as long as uh, as, as I can mention it. Um, but all of your clients that you work with on a day to day basis are all Google Apps users, aren't they? And you have built your whole um, IT business around Google Apps. Really, tell me a little bit more about Kimberly IT for people who are not aware of them. Yeah, that, that's correct. So Kimberly IT, we work with fun, young, and growing companies. Um, We're very specific with who we work with, as you can see with the strap line we've got there. Um, The idea is anyone who comes and works with Kimberly IT as an MSP, as a partner with them, will be using the Google Cloud Platform. Um, So they will stop using uh, Microsoft's platform or Amazon's platform. Everything will be moved to to G Suite and and any any other functions they need in Google Cloud. Um, Of course, we offer the support for the devices that they're using to connect. But the nice thing is we have like a standardization across our um, our platform with all our clients. We're kind of like very close to the McDonald's of IT support. Um, yep. and that everything functions the same, which makes it very easy for us to support clients really quickly. Um, we also have access to um, Google's support department of thousands of people if we need to. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just having that having that consistency throughout just helps run the business nicely. Yeah, and and um, it's probably well documented that I drank the Google Kool Aid um, a few years ago and moved across from from Microsoft. Google's are the, the best fit for, for for my business, and actually Kimberly IT were the company that helped me get on board with Google. So uh, thank you for that. And um, but before we uh, we go any further down that road, talking uh, specifically about Google uh, Apps or G Suite, see it's still not going to change. Uh, let's talk about what new features are coming to G Suite. So when you were at the Google Cloud Next Expo, what Google specifically talking about as new features that are coming to G Suite? Well, they had a big slide up of lots of uh, features that are coming through 2017. Um, it was too big for them to go through, and it'd be too big for me to go through every item on, on our <laughs> podcast here. But there's a few key ones that I'm, I'm really interested in. One's already launched that's Team Drive. So, Team Drive is a, a new area of Google Drive, which makes it very easy for you to share documents and files and folders with, with your team and within your company. Previously, um, you'd have an area called My Drive in Google Drive, which are, where whoever uploads the data is the owner of that data rather than the business being the owner of the data, which can cause issues with sharing and, and things like this. So, you, you, for example, you could create a, a master folder. Someone else could then create a, a subfolder inside, which they're owner, owner of. You could then put a file inside that subfolder and then the person who created that subfolder decides to delete it. So where does your file now live? Because the folder it's in has been deleted, yeah. but it's so it just kind of vanished, and it was you had to go and search for it to get it back. But now with Team Drives, um, everything is in one place. So you create our, our strategy to do it is every client a company has, you should um, create a Team Drive for each client. Um, you then use the built-in mailing list in G Suite. So when someone comes on a, on board, um, you put them like in your internal mailing list, and they have access straight away to those drives that they need access to, rather than having to go. Oh, oh, Sonia, can you share that with me? Um, and again, getting access that way, they have instant access to it. You have some extra controls over the files in there as well. So they've, um, you have an, you can kind of have an admin of that team drive who has full access and can do whatever they like inside that team drive, um, like move files around, rename them, delete them, things like that. But the new, the new function is you have one called Edit Only, um, which what, what that does is so if you're a team leader and you've got five people in your team you can give the remaining five people in your team edit-only access. What that allows them to do is upload new files, create new folders inside this team drive, and edit stuff that already exists. But they can't then go and delete stuff that they're not allowed to delete because they get blocked from doing that. They can't then go and move folders around to wreck your the, the file structure you've got inside that, that team drive. 
um, which is really nice. You can it gives you more control over who has access to the stuff in Team Drive, so you can share individual files externally, but you can't you, you can't share a whole folder externally because you may have a folder inside that Team Drive that has that um, someone then say say you've got a folder inside uh, Team Drive. Um, Remember, everyone can see what's inside a team drive who's a member of the team. If you go and share that externally with a client and then someone uploads a file into that folder that, hey, you may not want your client to see, that's not a great idea. So you can not You can only share files individually outside the company. So it gives you that extra control over what people can actually see and do that aren't part of your company. Yeah. yeah. So it seems as though this is, this is a product in re-maturing the Google Drive, right? right? Yeah. It's, um, well, this is, this is the part designed for um, enterprises. Um, because enterprise didn't like the lack of control that you had previously on Google Drive, as I just mentioned about the ownership. So Team Drive gives them all that control that they want. You can have Team Drive admins who just monitor what's going on on, on Team Drive. They create Team Drives. They can remove Team Drives. They can add and remove members. Um, so it gives you all that extra functionality that big companies are after. Um, and it's a bonus for mid-sized companies and, and small businesses because it gives them more control over their data as well. And there's no extra charge on that. It's just included with the with Google Drive. It's good to see where it's going. The, now, there's a feature that I think is associated with um, Google Drive or Team Drive um, that I'm quite excited about as a Google Drive user, and that's a Drive file stream. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that and, and, and perhaps explain why I'm getting so excited about it. I just got a big smile on my mouth when you mentioned that because it's uh, <laughs> it is a game changer for, uh, for Google Drive, I've had a doubt. So what file stream is... Yeah, on a Mac or a Windows PC, it will map a drive to your computer. Just so it happens to be called G Drive. If, it, if G is available and it hasn't been used by something else, it will map itself by default as G Drive onto your, um, onto your computer as a map drive. Um, the cool feature about it is rather than it downloading all the data that's on Google Drive, it just downloads um, you know, your thumbnails, your, your shortcuts to, the, to the, um, the files in there. So when you double click on one, it will quickly, normally within six seconds, have the file downloaded onto your machine ready for you to use. Um, it will cache files that you use often. So using a bit of AI in the background, it will work out what files you're most likely going to be opening and using, and it will cache them locally on the machine just to make them a bit quicker and to make them available offline. Um, but the nice feature is it gives you a bit, because it's a map drive now, essentially the computer thinks it's connected to kind of a server, um, and it isn't really, but for the computer it thinks it is. So um, I'll give you an example of a client we've got. We've got a client that manufactures curtains, and they, they use a bit of software, um, which is designed specifically for curtain manufacturers. They haven't, this, this bit of software is very old because the company that makes it has no competition. So there's only one company you can buy this software off, and they don't really update it. Um, so at the moment, we had to, because they're fully cloud and they have no servers, we had to stick the data files on a NAS drive. Um, for the and, and have all the machines mapped to the NAS drive for these data files because if you put them into a standard sync client program, um, that would actually cause the whole program to stop working and breaking. It just couldn't do it. But now because of the NAP, map drives, we can actually have these files sitting on Google Cloud and just mapped to the computer, as I, meant, as I said, just like it's a server connection. And yeah. that program can now live in the cloud without having, having to be on a local NAS drive. So this, so this is going to open possibilities for lots of old line of business applications to be able to, to be used in this one. That's, that's the reason Google um, uh, said they're doing it. They actually mentioned that in the in, when they were announcing it at the keynote in San Francisco the month before. But yes, the, the idea of this is to bring, allow legacy programs to be moved over to Google Cloud and run off the cloud, uh, affecting the, the local machines. Well, I'm excited about that from my perspective because it means I'm going to be able to, instead of syncing all, all the data to my local machine, I'm going to be able to connect to my Google Drive directly and um, just access files uh, natively, you know, have a drive letter. So it's a little bit old fashioned in the approach. Um, or let me let me rephrase that. It's a little bit more traditional in the approach, so it'll seem an obvious thing to a lot of uh, people, perhaps who aren't familiar with Google Apps. But from the Google Apps perspective, it's uh, or the G Suite perspective, it's really going to work well, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I will. I, I believe that Dropbox and uh, Microsoft OneDrive are bringing out and try and bring out similar features anyway. Um, yeah, it just makes sense. Yeah. So let, let's shift gear a, a little bit. Let's talk about, so we've talked about all the awesome features of um, uh, Google Drive and G Suite. Um, let's talk about something that I think is a little bit neglected, and that's Google Plus. 
So uh, Google Plus, for you know, it's been around for a long time now as a social media platform. It never really took off in the way that um, um, uh, you know, as the Facebook killer or anything like that. It's got its own following, definitely. I've got a lot of value out of it over the years, but it's never really taken off as a mainstream social media platform. I'm intrigued to see what Google are doing with Google Plus and specifically how they're going to make it uh, useful to small businesses. Perhaps tell us more, a little bit more about what you learned about their plans for Google Plus. Yeah, Google Plus is a very interesting product in that it has actually got a lot of development being take, taking place on it. Very small things happening all the time. But um, it was a few months ago that Google Plus got moved into class as a core service of G Suite. So you've got, you've got a number of core services like Gmail, Google Drive, Google Calendar, Hangouts, those kind of things. When it becomes a core suite, it means it's not going to disappear. It's going to be there for a while before, before it, if it ever gets sunsetted or anything like that. It's not going to go away in G Suite. But it also means that the focus has changed from it being a social network to more of a social platform for, uh, for business to use internally. Um, so the, the key feature... The key announcement that I saw there, which they haven't given an announced date, is they're going to actually turn, give you the option to turn Google Plus into a walled garden for your business. So at the moment, you can set it, you can, as an admin, you can say, I, I, as by default, I don't want a user to um, publish a post publicly, but a user can actually override that when they're posting a, a, posting a post if they wanted to at the moment. But with the walled garden, uh, garden version, there's no possibility of that. I feel it's going to become more of a, a dashboard for your business. Yeah, so be the main point when you when you when you log into G Suite for the first time, um, you're going to gain. Uh, you could potentially have yourself set up so you go straight to G Suite, and that's going to have all your notifications, all what's been shared inside the business. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of like a social network for a private business, but it's going to have far more integration with Google Docs, Drive, and 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 things like that in Calendar. So the big question that jumped out at me with this one, and I, I want to see if you, um, if I'm thinking on the right lines, is this a competitor to Slack, maybe, or is it off the mark? Do you see it as something that can grow to to rival Slack? I would say this is the competitor of Slack. I think when we talk a bit later about the new Hangouts, that is the competitor to Slack. Right. Um, Google Plus is probably the competitor to um, the equivalent of well, Microsoft has a, uh, an equivalent in three six five. I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's kind of, do you know what it's called? I can't, I can't remember the I name. Off the top of my head, I don't because, as you know, I've drunk the Google Kool Aid, but I do know the products that you're uh, that you're talking about there. But yeah, so I see. So it's Google's version of that. Yeah. Yeah, um, Google were pitching it as a way of getting to know your your colleagues inside the business. Um, for example, in Google, they were saying what they have. They have like a community on Google Plus called How Google Really Works, and people sh people are sharing tips on there. If, um, you know, if you need to get a new computer, this is actually how you go about doing getting a new computer. Maybe this is how the documentation tells you. But if you become yeah. friends with so-and-so, you know, you're going to get this new computer a bit quicker. So it's kind of things like that, just to show, just, just sharing that. But you can also do project work on there. So you can basically um, build a little community that could be around a client. And that's where you share all your content with about that client with other people in the business and ideas that you want to spread around. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that develops. And Microsoft Teams, I've just, uh, ironically enough, Googled on it, James, to find out what it was called. Uh, and, um, yeah. it's, and Yammer was the one that kept coming to, to my mind. But um, yeah, just a, a little bit like uh, Google Apps and G Suite and things, Microsoft do like moving the names around a little bit over time to time. So I, I get confused. But uh, OK, so we've, uh, we've talked about Google+. Plus. Tell us a little bit more then about um, your, what you're excited about with the progression of Google Hangouts. Um, for those people who are listening into this as a podcast today, we're actually recording this live over video as well as a Google Hangout. Um, for people who are not familiar with Google Hangouts, what are they? And what are the new features that are coming up for them? Okay, well, first off, Hangouts is a bit of a mess at the moment, which you're probably surprised <laughs> that I'm saying that. Um, Google's messaging strategy has gone a bit funny in the last year or so. Um, they, they kind of missed the boat on the uh, on the consumer hangout side with WhatsApp and, and things like that. Um, so they decided to remove a few, quite a few of the features from Hangouts and put them into an, or well, didn't even put them in, but launched another app called Allo for consumer users, yep. which hasn't taken off. It's been a complete flop. And they've got Duo. Um, but going back to the Hangouts, they, they announced that Hangouts would be um, basically designed for business. So it'll be a bit, the business messenger will become that. So they get rid, get rid of the consumer side of it and just make it a business messenger. Um, problem they've got at the moment is they have three um, different hangouts. So you've got 
We've got Hangouts, which we all know, which is instant messaging, video chat, um, sharing documents and things like that, um, group chats, and like, as we're doing this Hangouts on air at the moment. Um, then you've got Hangouts Chat, which is the new Slack competitor. And then you've also got Hangouts Meet, which is like just a video Hangouts. Why these all can't be inside just Hangouts doesn't make any sense why you've got to have these three different apps. Uh, because as, we, as you can see now, we're using the standard Hangouts and we're quite ha ha easily able to do a video call. Um, Hangouts, I'm going to start with Hangouts Meet, which is the new video app. So, um, you know, you probably remember that I'm a big fan of Appear.in. Yeah. Which is a very simple messaging program. You know, plugins, nothing required. It's just a URL that you share with somebody and they can, uh, they can join the video conversation. But basically, Hangouts Meet is a copy of that. So it's just a pure video app. Up to 25 uh, people can be in the, in the video at one time. If you're on the enterprise package, it can have up to 30 people. Um, it has the ability on the enterprise package for a dial-in phone number. So people can actually dial into the meeting and listen to it, but it's currently just US-based. Hopefully that will be coming to the UK. Um, there was a bit of discussion in the background that we'd quite like to have it on the business package as well as the pay-as-you-go option, because uh, at the moment it's just for the enterprise. Um, but Meet doesn't require any logins and stuff like that, because we, if we go back to Hangouts when it originally started, it was very integrated into Google+. Plus, and that caused issues because it required people to have a Google Plus account to be able to talk, and they might not be in your company, they might not be using Google Apps. Yeah. So it was a bit of a nuisance. They dropped that. Couple, uh, dropped it late, but they dropped it about two years after after Google Plus came out. Um, the uh, login requirements. Uh, I guess the damage has sort of been done. People were kind of avoiding Hangouts and they were using Skype and and, and, and other, other things like that. So this is Google trying to come back and, and make it easy for people to have video calls. So Hangouts Meet is just basically a URL that you share with somebody and those people can just join that meeting. Hangouts Chat is the interesting one. So Hangouts Chat is the competitor to Slack. Uh, well, it will be at some point. I've got early access to it at the moment. It's very basic. I don't use it because I think it's too basic. I have more features in the current Hangouts program that we're using at the moment. Um, but it will have nice features with Google Docs um, and all the Google Google Suites. So if you put a URL, it will embed the document into the, into the chat. It has a, an interesting feature where a single chat can be separated into multiple chats. So they're using quite a lot of um, AI bots in there. So, for example, we could have a we, we could create a chat room and we could call it let's call it marketing chat room. And generally, we're talking about marketing in there, um, and it will kind of surf, it will automatically surface the, the chats inside that marketing room to the top that it feels are relevant to you. So, say for example, if we started talking about lunch at some point, well, lunch is going to be relevant for maybe an hour or so on that day. So then that's going to be surfaced near the top around lunchtime because, hey, you probably want to know where your, your mates are going for food and you might want to join them. Uh, or if you're having a client um, meet a lunch meeting, where, where the location is. And then later in the day, that would like drop down the chat window so you wouldn't see it as much and more relevant stuff would reappear. So it's using a lot of AI in there. Um, but it's as it's in early access, you can't really demo it because you can't actually talk to people external of your own domain at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I... That should be launching this year, Q4. I think. <laughs> Exciting moment, and Google using the AI aspect is uh, to differentiate itself um, from Slack. One of the biggest challenges I have with Slack, and, and I'll put it out there, I'm a huge fan. I use Slack internally with my team, um, use it for a number of other projects. But the biggest challenge you have with Slack is in a thriving community, you know, with dozens or even hundreds of users, it just becomes unwieldy. You know, you can't keep track. It's like watching the Matrix. It just all this data uh, disappears off. So that idea of using AI um, to bring the most relevant conversations to the top without any manual intervention, that could be a game changer. That could really um, differentiate uh, uh, this product away from Slack. That's when, um, when when Google renamed Google Apps to G Suite. They kind of changed the focus. So G Suite is going to have a lot of AI involved into it. The idea is to get rid of all the mundane tasks that you get forced to do. Um, as you know, with Smart Reply and Inbox, which we'll go on to our next topic, I guess. Yeah, well, let, let's talk about that now because I'm excited. And on the subject of AI, you know, this um, uh, for, from everything that we spoke about with uh, uh, Google Cloud Next and the announcements and things, uh, the AI element is one of the most important. And it seems to be playing into a lot of what Google are doing. Talk about Smart Reply specifically because I think this is going to be a godsend to a lot of people, isn't it? They're really going to like it. Tell us more about it. It is, it is, because I, I, I guess... 
me and you always hear people struggling about their emails and they tend to be using Outlook, but we don't hear it so much from people who are using, using Gmail. Um, so um, Smart Reply is, is currently available in Inbox by Gmail, which is the other way of viewing your emails. Um, but Smart Reply is going to be coming to Gmail um, this year, uh, very soon, hopefully. Uh, what Smart Reply does is it analyzes the emails that you've been sent and it will automatically write three quick, three quick uh, responses for you to pick from. Um, so all you have to do is, uh, if you're on your mobile, it's a one-tap thing. If it's on your computer, it's a one-mouse click. You click on the response you want, it will automatically stick into the email, and you can hit send, and off it goes. Um, the response is it kind of, it learns from how you normally respond to people, so it kind of uses the same kind of wording that you would. Um, it won't go and pick some mad word that no one's ever heard of, and they've got to look it up in a, in a dictionary. It will be very simple. Um, but it takes over the... Um, really mundane stuff like so so someone sends you an email saying hey james yeah great can we um can we meet at 3 p.m on, on friday and you know you just have, it will just come back with an option saying yes that's great um no i can't do 3 p.m um uh, hopefully at some point it'll say no i can't do 3 p.m but how about this time because it'll have a look in your calendar and say you're free on this time yeah. um and and then you can just quickly respond without having to waste your time having to look for all these possibilities um of, of when you're free it's uh it is a really smart thing. It's, it's, it's going to work well. OK, I'd like to briefly pause for a second to let you know about my new book, The IT Business Owner's Survival Guide. I'm the former owner of an IT managed service provider business myself, so I know exactly what it's like to struggle to cope with the day-to-day stresses of running an IT business. I know there are days or even weeks when you get frustrated and wonder whether it's all worth it to go it alone. I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be like that. The IT Business Owner Survival Guide contains a collection of easy-to-digest guides and tips on how to cope with the common tasks that cause IT business owners worry and stress. If you want to learn how to save time, avoid stress, and build a successful IT business, then you don't have to do it alone. You can buy the IT Business Owner Survival Guide from Amazon or visit itbusinesssurvivalguide.com and download the first chapter for free. That's itbusinesssurvivalguide.com. Um, without going off at too much of a tangent here, we're, t- we're here to talk about Google Tool, but this this whole idea of AI, I think it's probably worth sharing with, with uh, listeners and viewers. Um, when you and I came to put this uh, time in the diary for us to talk together, we're both very busy running around. You're a, a new dad. You're an entrepreneur. You've got businesses on the go. Um, rather than going backwards and forwards um, or even involving uh, members of our team, to, to you know to bring that together to delegate it we we did something quite interesting perhaps you can share how we organized this meeting so yeah we used a service called um x.ai which is an ai based or it, it specializes just on meetings so my my ai is a, a lady called amy ingram she doesn't exist at all uh, apart from on a, a big cloud computer somewhere but she's connected to my google calendar so when richard wanted to meet up with this I said, yes, Richard, this is fine. This is great. I'm going to um, um, CC Amy in, and she's going to find a date for us. What Amy does is she then looks into my calendar. She'll su- suggest some times to Richard, but Richard can reply in natural language, just how he'd normally talk to somebody, say, yes, I can do that date, or no, I can't do it at this date. How, how about that? And she takes over the booking for me. So she arranged the, this, this, this podcast was arranged between Amy and AI and, and Richard. And all I had to do at the end was just say yes, that's that's fine. After yeah. they, I think you had a number of emails because we had you had to reschedule it as well. Um, we did so we were intrigued, yeah. weren't we? I mean, we got in touch on Hangout. So this this meeting, this podcast we got here was originally set for um, twenty four hours from now, and there was a little bit of conflict on my side, uh, scheduling conflict. So I got in touch and said, "Hey, James, are you free?" And of course, you did the smart thing and said, "Well, yes, I am. Speak to Amy and reschedule it." So I literally dropped Amy. Uh, your AI uh, calendar, I dropped her an email and said, um, Amy, look, I can't do that day after all. Um, can we do it 24 hours earlier? And Amy came back and said, yeah, absolutely, we can do that. The The calendar invite was updated. It appeared in both of our calendars. Bosh, away it goes. Phenomenal. Works really well. And, and I was uh, intrigued, actually. We didn't do this because we're not cruel enough to, but my PA, Holly, who is a real person, we just wondered what would happen if we connected Amy and Holly, whether they would get the job uh, done uh, just as well. But uh, perhaps that's a test we can do for another day. 
I've read a few things on the on the internet where people have done that and they've not realised they're talking to a, a, an AI, so it works yeah. well. I think if you hadn't have told me, I probably wouldn't have guessed it was an AI. Um, and I was using absolute natural language. You know, I wasn't um, uh, changing the language that I used specifically because I knew I was talking to a robot. So um, really interesting. And we'll include that in the show notes for anybody else to take a look at. I know you're you're quite privileged because you're uh, cutting edge with these things. You, you've um, you've got onto that the beta program for that, but it's not a public beta at the moment. But let's uh, move back to Google then, if we can. Uh, still on the subject of AI, there was a number of uh, calendar updates, weren't there, which also included some interesting uh, AI features. Well, the, the, the main thing with calendar is actually it's going to have a, a redesign in um, 2017, Q20, 20, Q4 2017. Um, the, web, the web version is looks a bit dated. Um, it's sort of been forgotten about. It works well. Um, it's clear enough to see, but it's not the material design that everything else is. So if you look on your, your iPad or your, your Android phone, it looks a hell of a lot nicer. And, it has, and that has AI built into it. So, for example, um, you can... Tell, tell, so, so say if you wanted to basically go to, go to the gym every day or do a bit of exercise, um, on, the, mo on mobile, the mobile version of Google Calendar, you can say, hey, oh, yeah, I want to do 30 minutes of exercise every day. Can you find a slot when I can do it? In the, and it will ask you, do you want morning, afternoon, or evening? And you just tap on that, and it's going to program it in for you, and it's going to find times that you can go and do these exercises. Um, and that was what was known as Google Goals. Is that still the case, or is it just a, a Google mobile feature now? Um, I think it's just um, it's just built into the Google Calendar app, so yeah. I don't think it's got a yeah. special name anymore. Uh, yeah, but so um, Google Calendar web version it's going to have a redesign, so hopefully some of this AI stuff will come into it and it'll just look a bit a bit more. Yeah. Up because Gmail's having a redesign as well. They didn't actually mention this, but I spotted it in a slide. Uh, the slide they were showing when they were mentioning the smart replies um, and the snooze feature, it had a different looking um, Gmail in the background. Um, and so, so that's going to have like a material design uh, redesign and look very nice. Um, the one reason for that is there's a new thing coming to Gmail, which I forgot to mention. It's called add-ons. Okay. At the moment, you can put extensions on Google Chrome, and they had a bit of functionality, a bit of functionality down the right-hand side of Gmail. But that's like that's playing with the CSS and the, and the coding of Gmail to add that functionality to the right, the right of your inbox. So what add-ons are? They're actually an official way. Uh, for apps to interact interact with um, Gmail using a, an official API. So it's got some really cool features on that in that, say, for example, you're, you, you're, you're talking to a lead and you happen to also use Prosperworks as your CRM. It's one of the partners, initial partners. Um, Gmail will detect that you're talking to a lead and on the right-hand side of that email, it'll pop up with a uh, Prosperwork um, icon. That's on your web version or your your um, app version on your mobile phone, tap that icon and Prosperworks will load inside of Gmail, allowing you to um, look into this contact, see, see details when you last had a meeting with them, uh, what you were discussing, those kind of things on the fly. Uh, and on your mobile phone, it will do that without having without you having to leave the app and go into Prosperworks and then come back. It will just slide up onto your screen. You can see what you need to do, do what you want to do, slide it back down, and you're back to the email message that you were, you were going to send. Wow. So there's lots of cool stuff coming for, um, for for Gmail. Can I still call it Gmail? That's the name, yeah. Google <laughs> Maps. <laughs> but there's um, uh, one other AI feature that I noticed, um, and I think this mostly went overlooked, but it could be interesting to a lot of listeners, um, and that is the, um, the AI that Google is going to use within the calendar for meeting room bookings. So if there's a number of you within the business, we, we were, did you come across that one? Yourself, where they uh, basically oh, look for everybody's calendar. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so that's a one-click function. So you want to you want to book a meeting. Um, you can tell it to find a time. It's also a bot actually inside the new um, Hangouts chat. So if you're chatting to your team and hey, you want to um, want to get a meeting quickly, you can just say at meet, um, arrange a meeting now or arrange a meeting tomorrow, and it will find a time where everyone in that team is free, and it will automatically just stick it on their calendar and job's done. Yeah. Well, again, another great use of AI. And these, this is not futuristic. This is not pie in the sky. This is AI used to make a difference to, you know, uh, what people are doing on a day-to-day -day basis right now. So I think that's the most exciting thing about it. Yeah, unless you get on with doing what you really want to do rather than having to... Uh... Yeah, running your business rather than scheduling meetings and replying to yes, no to emails and things like that. It's so. probably a good time to be a PA. 
<laughs> Don't mention that to, to uh, Holly. She'll get paranoid about it. But uh, So there was another feature that, that Google mentioned. I just want to touch on it. I don't think it's going to be relevant for the majority of our audience who tend to be IT companies that are looking after small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, Google Jamboard, uh, Whiteboard, what is that? And um, why am I excited about it from, purely from a geeky, techie perspective? Well, from a, a techie perspective, it's a, it's a very cool device. It's basically a TV screen. Um, it uses a capacitive um, stylus, so it doesn't uh, a capacitive one. It doesn't need a battery anyway, and I think that that's the capacitive ones. Um, but it, yeah, it's a whiteboard, uh, and so it will link up with other jam boards in other offices you may have around the country or the world, um, and it allows you to basically doodle on it, uh, add pictures, do mind maps, whatever you want to do um, with someone else somewhere with another team elsewhere so you can all see it in real time what's going on it saves to google drive so you can always go back to it so there's no you don't have to stick a write a message on the whiteboard please don't rub off and please don't clear kind of thing um so all that data saved in your google drive you can get back to it whenever you want and carry uh, carry on um i don't think i have uh, an issue with it in that i think it's it's super pricey i think it's about six six thousand dollars upwards um I don't think it's. I don't think. Well, I don't think it's going to be any good for. Uh, well, it could be good, but I don't think any small or mid-sized businesses. Yeah, it's unlikely like small businesses are going to want to lay down six grand. Although the, the the whole whiteboard market is is progressing, isn't it? Mostly in the education scene. So perhaps one to keep an eye on for the future. But exciting technology, nevertheless. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. I heard some demos of it at uh, Next Seventeen actually. Cool. One of the things I had on top show to demo. Yeah, so purely from a techie perspective, if you've got six grand, if your clients have got six grand to um, to spend on a whiteboard, it's going to be a good one to look at. I suspect most of the people um, who are going to be listening and watching uh, our conversation today have clients whose budget are slightly less than that, but we'll see. If you uh, if you know anybody using Google Jamboard, get in touch and uh, drop James on me uh, a shout out. Yeah. Uh, so we've talked about a lot of features. We talked about AI. Um, what else was happening at uh, Google Cloud Next? Is, is there any anything that maybe uh, I missed and with your eagle eyes you caught? Um, put, me, put me on the spot now. <laughs> show notes on that one. Um, it was just a it was just a it was a cool event. There was um, about four thousand five hundred people there. Um, the they could have bought a few more demos on. To be honest, there wasn't. A, right wasn't that much interesting but they had a lot of partners there so they're people that they're so they have they've got part they've got google google now has g suite approved uh, vendors these are people okay. that do extra so you have people like ring central and dialpad which uh provide voip services but these are going to integrate really deeply into gmail with the new add-on feature for gmail um so it's so they had quite a few of these guys here, and just it was, it was nice chatting to them and seeing what they're doing and what features they're going to be going to be adding on there. Um, breakout sessions were were great. That's where they went into specifics of certain areas of each product. So I was going to the G Suite ones, G Suite focused ones, but they because it's Google Cloud, they had lots of other ones which were all about coding and, and stuff that I'm not that great at. Um, so I kind of missed those ones, but it was uh, it was it was really really good. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, you know, I'm, I'm sad to have missed it uh, myself. I was otherwise engaged, but um, having taken a trip to Google HQ myself in uh, Google HQ in Dublin, I should say, um, last year, absolutely blown away by what Google have got coming down the line, a lot of which we can't speak about publicly here. But uh, it's exciting times to be a Google partner. How are your clients um, finding uh, the difference Google has made to their business? Well, first off, thanks for rubbing it in about going to uh, Google, Google <laughs> HQ Island. I, I still haven't been invited. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted, why not? Yeah. And they've got a restaurant on every floor, which was my favourite feature of, uh, of Google oh, HQ. Right. But anyway. <laughs> did you see anything or were you in the restaurants all the time? <laughs> Say, oh, yeah. I actually did take some time out to uh, to go and visit the Google people. I didn't just spend all the time in the restaurant. So. <laughs> what, was the, uh, what was the final part of the question again? Um, yeah, uh, it, your clients. So uh, you've adopted Google across the board. I was I was intrigued. Um, you know, it's all well and good for you and I as two techies to talk about this, to get excited about new features. But what is it meaning in the real world for people? Have you had any uh, interesting stories coming out of some of your clients recently who have adopted uh, Google? Well, it's, it's the AI that they, they're really liking. It's, it's just simple stuff like smart reply. So um, one of our Clients is an accountancy firm. They're the big zero guys, and zero plugs in really nicely with um, G Suite. And they've actually flicked all over to uh, Inbox by 
uh, by Gmail just because it's got the snooze feature for email so you can tell them to go away and come back at a different time. Uh, and the smart reply just because they save so much time because um, as an accountant, as accountant, they get a lot of yes, no questions from clients. You know, is this the right stuff I've sent you, that kind of thing. So smart reply, they can just hit yes, this is, this is great, this is the right stuff. And it's, it actually saves them a hell of a lot of time rather than having to type out an email each time or we use a template. Um, so it's the AI, which is people, what people really notice when they move to G Suite, especially now with the, the AI getting improved all the time. Um, for example, Google Sheets um, has a new AI in it, which allows you to use natural language to get it to do things for you. So rather than having to know a complex formula uh, in, the, in the, um, the box in the top right-hand corner, you can just type in what you want it to do, say, create a pie chart showing the showing uh create a profit and loss pie, pie charts and it will find that data on that spreadsheet and it will just build a pie chart there for you without you having to manually select the the rows and the cells and stuff like that so ai is really taking over incredible and, and i think these are some of the features that whilst on the surface they sound quite basic um or let me rephrase that. They're actually features that you think, oh, that's not going to save me too much time. But having used them myself, I know as soon as you start using them, you can never go back. It just yeah. becomes the new normal. You know, the bar is set so much higher. I adopted um, uh, uh, Google Apps um, probably, what was it, six, seven years ago now after being a Microsoft partner in my previous life as an uh, IT business owner. Um, and I said that I would never give up Outlook, for instance. I remember having a conversation with you about it. And within, what was it, 24, 48 hours of using Gmail, I'm like, I love this thing. Uh, and so it is one of those ones, I think, that people have got used to using the Microsoft software, used to using traditional packages. Um, and it is a culture shock to move across to the Google stuff. But as soon as you do, you immediately start seeing the benefits and, and you can never turn back, really. That's, that's completely true. One of, one of the hidden benefits is the fact that when, you, when you're putting Microsoft Office in, your client's kind of wasting a lot of money because they're, they're, they're paying for Microsoft Office and 90% of those features in Office, their employees aren't going to be using. They're going to just, there's just 10% of features to use. And how I normally look at it is that Gmail focuses on the 10% of features that people actually use and gets them really spot on with AI and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, who needs 3D Word out? these days <laughs> we're going to get a you realize we're going to get a flood of tweets and things from people now saying i use 3d word art every day um <laughs> on that subject um thanks so much for your time today james you've shared with us all the background uh, google cloud next 17 um it's been really interesting to hear about all the products uh, all the product features and updates that google are bringing out if anybody watching or listening to this wants to get in touch with you and find out a little bit more where do they find kimberly it and where do they find you specifically so yeah kimberly it is at kimberly.com which is k-i-m for mike b-l-e-y.com you can get me on twitter at jimbo kimbo or um, at Kimberly IT. Um, I'm also on Google Plus if you want, if you want to go on there and actually use it. Um, if you go to jameskimberly.com, that will take you directly to my Google Plus profile. Um, and to see what I've been posting and, and things about Google I post on there. And I'd also recommend to anybody following this who's intrigued, um, uh, James's journey, entrepreneur, how he's made a, a business out of supporting clients, specifically with Google. Uh, check out um, James's founder diaries. And you've also just started a recent audio series, haven't you, where you're uh, giving updates to people who are interested on your, um, your journey as a businessman, really? Yeah, that's correct. So I've got a founder's log, which can be found on soundcloud.com. Um, and it's, it's not got a set schedule. I just record a bit of audio when I've, or something interesting to say that's happened in Kimberly IT or, or something I found out or, or useful information. Yeah, well worth checking out. Now, I can't leave you without um, trying to squeeze one final tip out of you. Um, uh, based on everything we've spoken about here, is there anything that me, James, as a Google user, uh, perhaps I'm not doing at the moment that I you think I should be doing? Anything at all? Well, you should be dropping Evernote and using to, moving to Google Keep. <laughs> wow, uh, Evernote is my modern uh, outlook. It's one of those ones that I think I could never give it up. Tell me why I should be uh, quitting Evernote and moving to Google. There's a lot of AI inside Google Keep now, um, and it's also, uh, I think it's become a core product of G Suite. Um, anyway, it's been integrated into Google Docs now, so you can quickly, whatever notes you've been taking Google Keep, you can quickly have them transferred into a proper document into, into, um, into Google Docs. You can also load Google Keep up in the sidebar now in Google Docs, so if you are 
referring to those notes, you can get to them really quickly and you can drag and drop them into your documents and any photos you've taken and things like that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I use Google all the time. I know you're a big fan of Google Keep. I've uh, drunk, as well as the Google Kool-Aid, I've drunk the Evernote Kool-Aid and have done for a number of years. Uh, so that's going to be a big shift for me, but I promise I will give Google uh, Keep another look at that. Um, James, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Uh, congratulations on being uh, becoming a dad recently as well. Um, fantastic news. And um, uh, congratulations on all the success of Kimberly IT and everything else that you're doing in business. Um, it's really good to see. Um, thanks again for your time today. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And um, we will look forward to hopefully seeing you on Twitter or, dare I say, Google Plus really soon. Cheers. Thanks for listening to Tub Talk, the podcast for IT business owners. You can find the show notes and bonus content for this interview, along with dozens of other interviews with IT business leaders over at www.tubblog.co.uk. If you enjoyed this podcast, then we'd really appreciate you rating and reviewing the show over at iTunes. Every review helps us reach new listeners and helps raise the bar for success in the IT industry. In our next episode, Richard speaks with Rick Yates to discuss ZSphere's modern distribution model to deliver solutions from a single source. Thanks for listening, and I'll speak with you next episode. Have a great day. Okay, I'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors, The Email Laundry. The Email Laundry combines security services with your customer's preferred email service to give them a truly enterprise-worthy email system. Well, what does that mean? Well, as an IT business, whether your customers are using Office 365, hosted exchange, an on-site exchange server, or any other type of email solution, cloud-based email security from the email laundry is a neat and effective solution for your customer. It will block spam and virus email with an impressive catch rate. Put simply, when your customer's email server is protected behind the email laundry, they'll thank you for the security it offers them. Now, the email laundry are offering free email security for your own domain to all listeners to this podcast. All you have to do is to sign up for a free partner account through the special listener URL, www.theemaillaundry.com forward slash to blog. Use that link to have your own domain filtered for free for one year. And there's more to this special offer. If you bring on board 100 pay mailboxes during your first six months, the email laundry will give you your own domain for free for another 12 months. So that means two years of the email laundry service for your own domain for free. Sign up for the email laundry now using the special listener offer at www.theemaillaundry.com forward slash tublog. Hey team, this is Richard again. Just one more thing before you take off, and that is MSP Insights. Now, every Tuesday, I share my thoughts on the business of IT with you, the managed service community. Thousands of managed service providers already subscribe to MSP Insights. It's easy to sign up, easy to cancel. MSP Insights is basically a short email from me every Tuesday without fail with advice on growing your IT business, plus cool resources I found, discovered, or started exploring that week. It's kind of like my diary of cool things and often includes articles or books I've read, tools I've discovered and events I think you'd be interested in, often sent to me by my friends and Tub Talk podcast guests. So if that sounds fun, a short tiny bite of MSP goodness every Tuesday and you'd like to try it out, just go to go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. That's gogo.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. Drop in your email and you'll get the very next one. Thanks for listening.